Hello and welcome to this week's Dividend Cafe video. It is Thursday morning. I'm at my uh, apartment in New York City and getting ready to leave for a day of meetings with our entire team from California, the entire Bonson Group, uh, besides two um, of our operations folks who are brand new to our team. Uh, they've stayed back to man the fort in Newport Beach, and the rest of the team is out here in New York, and we're getting ready for our annual team retreat, off-site, day of meetings, things of uh, that nature. Uh, really, really productive, healthy time, and, and uh, we've done it every year for, I don't know, five or six years out in Palm Desert. And because we have an office out in New York and and I'm out in New York so much, we thought this year would be fun to let the entire team experience the world's finance capital. So here we are. It's a beautiful day out in New York. Um, the market doesn't even open for a couple more hours on Thursday. So I can't tell you exactly how we're going to end up uh, Thursday, let alone Friday, but um, the market's up big <clears throat> on the week, largely off of a 550-point up day yesterday. Uh, the day after the midterm elections. So I'll focus most of my comments this this morning, um, this week, on the midterms. Uh, the Dividend Cafe podcast and the Dividend Cafe written weekly commentary, it really does go into a, a handful of other areas um, that I think you might find interesting. So, you know, you can always cross-pollinate the way in which you take in this media and content. But for those just kind of wanting the quick snapshot as to what has driven markets on Monday, October 29th, intraday low, the Dow hit 24,100, and we're now back to near 26,200. We're up a tiny bit over 2,000 points from that low point to where we are now. And of course, you know, we have no idea how things hold from here. But um, clearly it was well in advance of midterms that the market began kind of reversing and then it just simply accelerated yesterday. About 80 percent, not all of it, but about 80 percent of the market's drop um, has now been recovered. Um, once again, arguing for the futility of panic and the futility of timing. Now, what exactly caused this sort of reversal? Well, first and foremost, always and forever, the greatest candidate for any movement down or up is I have no idea. And neither do you, neither does anybody else. There is a certain randomness and arbitrariness and futility in, in explanation that is very important. But I would argue that the um, Particular events in October were so violent to the downside that they begged for a kind of suddenness in their reversal. And then the uncertainty that existed around the midterms, uh, even though the markets had very well priced in the fact that they expected the Democrats to take the House, which they did, but not by the margin they were expecting, and that the Republicans were going to keep control of the Senate, which they did, but it was not expected that they would add to the majority the way they did. So you really did end up with a kind of um, reasonably market-friendly outcome. Uh, gridlock is what people would hold out as the bad thing, and gridlock has never been negative into capital markets, uh, particularly stock markets for U.S. US investors. So all that to say that the kind of removal of the potential of an outlier event – uh, that there was something that could have gone worse than expected, whatever that may be, out of um, the midterms. That's now been removed, and we move on where we are um, politically. And, and I think the focus then will, will re-crystallize around corporate earnings um, and then going into 2019 – uh, the Fed is going to very likely be the largest actor in capital markets. And, and so we want to maintain a defensive position. We want to maintain um, an equal or underweight equity allocation, not overweight. Uh, but we do want to stay invested and we do want to maintain dividend income flow and we do want to maintain dividend income reinvestment. Uh, but uh, overweighting into the alternative asset class and um, keeping our fixed income, fixed income like, keeping our bonds bond like, that's our big theme right now. Um, in terms of some of the the uh, issues out of the election, you may not have been thinking about. It. I did a whole podcast at Advice and Insights 
on this, but you have to understand that the Prop 112 in Colorado, which was a statewide initiative, but it had national implications that was going to be a dramatic limitation on the ability of energy producers to drill and and essentially extract oil and gas on private land would have probably limited production in the state of Colorado by 85%. And it was soundly defeated. I think that that particular initiative not only would have been really, really problematic for the Colorado economy and the workers that derive their income and feed their family from that sector, but it would have been um, detrimental in setting a precedent for other states around the country and then, of course, the national companies that derive a lot of their production out of Colorado. Uh, and apparently, based on how markets responded to it, that was not priced in that it was going to fail because um, it failed rather substantially. And and that's been a boon to those producers. In, in my own state of California, um, Prop 10 also failed. Uh, and failed quite substantially, which was going to uh, implement price controls or rent controls in large aspects of the real estate sector. And again, I think it would have had a real profound effect as other states ended up perhaps kind of introducing copycat legislation that uh, would not have been good, I think, for that particular asset class and trickle out effects into the economy. So those are not quite as exciting of topics when you look at the midterms, and we love to get into the, the Congress and the Senate and big key races and what the president's going to do next and Nancy Pelosi and Donald Trump and all that stuff. But some of these propositions probably had even more profound impact. Um, I do need to leave it there because I have to, first of all, record the Dividend Cafe podcast, and then I have to get going to our team meetings. And so reach out if you would like with any questions you may have. And... and um, Next week, we plan going into Thanksgiving week to do a a little more comprehensive coverage of the midterms and give you an overlay of of where things are now once a week is kind of settled outside of the midterms. But uh, right now, we we really do feel good about how we're positioned. I say that every week, and any week you should assume I do because if I didn't feel good about how I was positioned, I would reposition. Uh, I hope that goes without saying. Um, Thanks for listening to this week's Dividend Cafe, and we look forward to talking to you again next week.